Hi, I'm Brian Sparks, Senior Editor of Greenhouse Grower. Welcome to our Shop Talk Tech Tips series on greenhousegrower.com. This month, we are talking with insect control experts to learn more about the most challenging greenhouse pests, as well as how growers can identify and control them. We recently sat down with Rick Fletcher of New Farm to talk about two-spotted spider mites. Here's what he had to say. I think in my experience that the most difficult thing is that it's missed during the scouting. Uh, I think a lot of folks miss the initial identification, and then by the time they get to it, the populations are in mid-size to large size, and they're in a curative situation that because of the mite life cycle, they may have all forms of egg immature and adult at the time that they find it and then need to react to it. Well, two spot mites are very easy to identify because of their, their typical mite shape as far as the body and the legs, but two spot mites have the definitive two dark spots on their body. Yes, when they're first in stars, very young uh, nymphal stage, they may not have the expression of that. They may just look like little red dots, but as they get larger, those two very distinctive dark spots show up on the sides of their body. Trying to think about resistance management and also trying to think about life cycle management, because as I said, most of my experiences when, when we get calls about, I, hey, I have a mite problem, what do I do? <laughs> it's curative, which means they're all there. So then it becomes, I mean, the work that we've been doing is looking at what products are in our portfolio. Uh, do we have products that cover short and long-term durations, which folks are looking for, a residual control? And do we have products that act in the life cycle, killing the eggs, killing the juveniles, killing the adults, so that we can then either stage these one after another, or we can put them together as kind of a complete life cycle attack at one time. Basic practices would be first scouting, as I've mentioned before, making sure somebody is routinely checking, having some indicator plants that will normally be the first ones that mites will gravitate to. You know, that might be a good biological practice, you know, as far as just getting there. After that, um, making sure that your mite identification is, is straightforward that you are dealing in fact with spider mite and not a broad mite or an aerified mite, which of course have some plant specificity. They like certain crops versus others. And then after that is making sure that you understand uh, that you're moving the modes of action of the chemical. You know, so in, in the pathology world versus the entomology world, we have slightly different rules for resistance management. But the idea with bugs is not to expose the bug to the same mode of action twice in the life cycle. My populations are pretty straightforward as far as their, their growth stage. You know, they, they, they have a predictable path. But the other thing that most growers have to be reminded about is that that life cycle can speed up when it gets warmer. So the, the, the life cycle uh, repetitiveness can shrink in time, which means the populations build faster as it gets warmer. And that's more of a problem outdoors, uh, you know, in a field situation than it is in a greenhouse, because a lot of greenhouses are more climate controlled, so it's a more static uh, condition. But if the temperatures are increasing, you know, it's, it's uh, May or June, and you're starting to lift the sides and vent the houses, and now you've got ambient air, the populations could build more quickly while it's warmer. Follow the best management practices that we've discussed. Make sure they scout. Make sure if they can get the populations early because that way you're dealing with less of a runaway freight train, you know, that you, because you, you, you have to put the brakes on here somewhere. Um, and we're trying to avoid, you know, pulling the handle and hitting the emergency button if we can, because by then the populations are so high, we've probably had feeding damage. And that's the situation we don't want to want to be in. And then lastly, make sure that they're rotating their chemicals.